Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. I am finally going to get started on my 148th scale kit and this is Raven's Perch by Petite Properties. Now this truly is a haunted property and I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to do it justice. I've already been through all the pieces and made sure that I've got everything and well there's nothing else to do but get started. Today I'm trying something new in that I'm going to give you a bit of a voiceover and obviously there's rather a lot of actual making here so we've sped up the footage. Now I started by dry fitting the kit. This is something that's always recommended and um, I thought it was especially important because this is the first 148 scale kit that I'd done. Now I used tape to hold it in place and then I had the clever idea of marking where the floors went. Because of the small scale of this house, you really need to decorate it as you go. It's almost impossible to do it afterwards. So by marking where the floors went, I could see where I needed to do each wall covering. And it was simple as that. Just checking and trying to make sure that everything looked as it should do. I made my floorboards using 1 8 of an inch wide strips of 160 GSM card, the kind that I normally put through my printer. I coloured each strip using a coffee coloured archival ink and then stuck each one down onto the floors. Now I painted the floors black before I began and then the sections that would also be ceilings I painted with a off-white coloured emulsion paint um, just so that my ceilings were ready to go when I came to put the house together. This way of doing the floors was incredibly time consuming, but it did give me a nice variation in colour and a floor that actually looks like it's got some texture to it, which is something that I wanted for this project. I used scrapbook paper for my wallpaper 
Um, I was lucky enough to have some that was in a small enough scale that the patterns worked. And obviously, it was just a case of sticking it down and then cutting out the sections where the doors and the windows fitted. I used my favourite acrylic glue for sticking the house together. Um, it might be unusual, but I tend to find that it works for most things. And to be fair, it stuck pretty well in most places. This was fairly time consuming in that you have to get pieces in the right place and let them dry and make sure everything's all lined up. But it's definitely worth taking the time because obviously the entire look of the finished project depends on you getting it right at this stage. As I went along, I started adding distressing to the walls inside. I used a mixture of black acrylic paint and water that is applied quite thinly and can be applied in a number of layers to build up the dirt and grime. It's a very simple ageing effect, but one that quite quickly makes something look um, far older than it really is.
I have actually added the aging technique to every interior finish that I've done so far. I want this to be an abandoned house. I knew this from the beginning that it was not going to be a well-loved property and I think it's important that I get these um, little bits done while it's possible to actually get to the pieces. Here I'm repeating the process with the tower section of the house. Um, I've done the floors as before, I've done the walls as before, again using scrapbook paper. And I'm just putting this together quite um, straightforwardly, which involved making sure that I kept each section of floor at right angles to the wall as I was sticking it together, which was easier said than done. The completed tower section looks quite effective and I was really pleased with how the kit to this stage had gone together. The outside of the house was all given a base coat of black acrylic paint. This is because I find black to be the ideal base coat for anything darker and for some lighter things as well, if you want an aged look. So I do tend to cover everything with black paint in the first place. Thank you. 
Next step was to stick the tower and the main body of the house together. Again, I used my favourite acrylic glue and I put glue onto both parts so that I could make sure that it, while it went right to the edges. Um, you'll understand this, that because of the way it fits offset, you need to make sure it's lined up right at the bottom and at the doors. And the easiest way to glue it was to do it the way that I did it. The roof is made from mount board and needed shaping but first I gave the insides of it a coat of the same paint that I'd used for the ceilings and the attic space in the house. Um, just a thin coat because obviously I didn't want to affect the um, properties of the mount board I didn't want it to warp or anything like that but at the same time I didn't want to be having to try and get a brush in to such a small space once it was all put together. The instructions tell you to score the main roof section on the side that isn't scored um, when they cut it. This is just so that you can get the little lip at the bottom of the roof so it all fits nice and um, snugly when you um, put it in place. Once the tower roof is um, moulded into place, you have to um, tape it temporarily and then fill the joints with copious amounts of glue. Um, and it is copious amounts of glue. You have to do this on the inside and the outside to um, ensure a really good seal once it's all um, all in place but obviously once it's painted and it's all finished none of that is actually going to show. The tower roof attaches using this um, rectangular piece and um, again, it's kind of stick it in place and then fill the gaps with glue. 
It might seem a little bit odd to be doing something like this, but when you're using um, pieces that are odd shapes, I suppose it really is the only way, is to just um, fill the gaps. And on such a small scale, glue really is the only option. The main section of the roof has to be fitted to the curved bits of the walls so that is a case of having to add the glue to those and then hold it in place until everything is set. It took a while but it was worth it in the end. The tower roof was far easier to attach because that was just a square flat piece to a flat, another flat piece. This is where I've got to with Raven's Perch up to this point. The two parts of the house are together and the roofs are both on and the inside of all the main rooms and the tower rooms are basically decorated. I need to add some ageing to the roof pieces um, but that'll be for another day. I'm pleased with how it's coming together and it is, though still a small house, it's getting a bit big for manoeuvring in front of the camera, but we are making progress. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and until next time, bye.